Good afternoon and evening, everyone. It is David Schlotthauer here in the Weather Center, keeping an eye on your weather forecast for April 11th, 2023. In today's weather discussion, we are keeping an eye on a mid-April snowstorm for the northern portion of the U.S., including for the Great Lakes. This could bring in some strong winds, much colder temperatures, and maybe some severe weather, too. So here's a look at the latest water vapor satellite imagery provided by TropicalTidbits.com or Levi Cowan that makes this website public, which is really awesome. So here's a look at the water vapor and we can see we have a couple of weather systems that are influencing the weather pattern right now and this is going to lead to bigger changes by the end of this week. So first of all we have a ridge of high pressure that is over the northern plains. This is bringing in much warmer temperatures. I'm sure a lot of you are loving the 80s and 90s up there um, especially over Nebraska but there are changes coming and this is going to bring some pretty big changes changes for a lot of you that have enjoyed the warmer temperatures. There's a trough of low pressure over the Pacific Northwest as seen on the water vapor satellite imagery. This trough right here is going to be moving eastward over the next two to three days and this is again going to bring a lot of weather pattern changes, much colder temperatures, the chances for moderate to heavy snowfall, especially up here across Wisconsin, Michigan, maybe some blizzard conditions in a rare occasion because there's going to be a lot of strong winds associated with this system. And of course, for the uh, further south, there might be some severe weather associated with this disturbance as it moves eastward. So here's a look at your detailed Thursday forecast in 60 hours from now on the European model, which rendered just a few hours ago. So this is fresh out of the oven and we can see where our disturbance is going to be setting up at the one that i showed you on water vapor imagery so we can see here a surface low pressure system this time of the year this is where they really like to form on the leeward side of the rockies this is what we call a colorado rocky low that forms because we have falling heights we have falling temperatures aloft we got some convergence going on and to the north where we do have some moisture that's going to be in the form of light to moderate snowfall over Montana. I mean, come on, it's mid-April. This is no longer January, February anymore. It should not be snowing. Well, sometimes it should be, but I mean, come on, we're already in mid-spring. This is kind of getting old with all the snow. So going forward, this is for uh, Friday afternoon. We can see the first areas of showers and thunderstorms could develop along a dry line, which is down here over Oklahoma, along a stationary boundary kind of stretched apart over, uh, say, Minnesota. If you're in northwestern portion of Iowa, if you're in Nebraska, there is going to be some chances of showers and thunderstorms. Some of these could be severe, so maybe the risk for some large hail, some damaging wind gusts, and maybe a spin up or two cannot be ruled out. So going forward, this system really gets going. So this is by Friday afternoon into Saturday. Uh, by Saturday morning, or actually Sunday morning, excuse me, got my days mixed up. So we can see 999 millibar system here with some moderate to heavy snowfall over northern Wisconsin, down to the south here where we do have some showers and thunderstorms over Tennessee, over Kentucky, over Indiana, over Ohio, stretching into even uh, southern Georgia and northwestern portion there of Florida in association with that system. Now, this, of course, the surface low, there are going to be a secondary low that tries to form, and it's going to rotate. It's going to do a little Fujiwara effect, and we can see how that kind of uh, pans out there. And every time these happen, uh, you get long-duration impacts over Wisconsin, even over portions of eastern Minnesota. There can be a lot of snowfall accumulation associated with some strong gusty winds that could lead to whiteout conditions, maybe some blizzard conditions, and of course, lots of cold air going to be in the wake of that system. Not only that, there's a risk also maybe for some uh, freezing rain, and maybe some um, slushy snow too because the temperature gradient allows that. That's going to stick around. This is for Monday morning. So the latter part of your weekend doesn't look too great at all. So if you want to do anything outdoors, might want to plan around the weather because it's going to be kind of inclement out there. That kind of gets destroyed by Monday night into Tuesday. And then a second piece of that energy wants to develop uh, into the northeast 
by the time we go into, say, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday by next week. Very far out. This is seven or eight days. Uh, you know how forecasts can actually be. They could change quite a bit. And I really emphasize that in each of my videos, folks. Just because you see something does not mean it's actually going to happen. We could only rely on numerical weather forecasting out to about three or four days. Okay, after about the four to five-ish day mark, things become more murky. So I want you all to understand that. Yeah, there's rain. It's good news, you know. But hey, don't get your hopes up just yet. Uh, give it another few more days and then we'll probably be looking at more consistency. So here's a look at the GFS model. I wanted to show you all this. Again, pretty uh, same concept. Showers and thunderstorms do form here on Saturday, Friday night into Saturday. Again, uh, shower, um, maybe some hail, maybe some um, strong gusty winds associated with those storms. Maybe a spin up or two is expected. And then look what the GFS wants to uh, show. Maybe a surface slow forms much further south than what the European model has it, which is the surface slope kind of up here in southern portion there of Canada into northern Michigan. Okay, and then that continues. Look at this. Lots of snowfall, um, blustery conditions, cold, snowy. Just going to not be a day to do anything outdoors because it's going to be quite nasty for your Sunday morning. And then that continues possibly all the way through Monday morning with that surface low at 992 millibars. But look at the gradient here. Strong winds are going to be um, a big deal around this system because we got uh, very low pressure here. We got really strong um, Canadian high pressure to the north of it. And that's going to lead to some breezy winds and also some much colder temperatures and associated with that. And that low just kind of meanders. It's just going to kind of sit around uh, on the GFS model as strong um, a Canadian blocking uh, continues to influence what goes on down here. Maybe more showers later on in the period. But again, very far out. And just to show you how uncertain this is, the European model had showers and thunderstorms here. Uh, by Tuesday and Wednesday next week, while the GFS, no bets on it, no hopes on it yet. So there's, again, a lot of uncertainty in terms of that forecast. So now I want to show you all the upper level support, the upper level winds and, you know, the dynamics that go in hand with these disturbances. So again, remember the water vapor imagery that I showed you all right here? Um, that's the trough that the European model is simulating. And so when we go back and look at this, we can see there's your trough there over Montana, over Wyoming, over kind of the, the Dakotas. And so while this is not strong yet, it's going to actually amplify because we have northwesterly wind here on the backside. We have weaker southwesterly winds out in front of it. So when one kind of beats the other, we usually get an amplifying trough. And how these troughs amplify is uh, when um, say we get super strong northwest winds here and weaker southerly winds um, kind of in the right front quadrant. The trough is able to amplify and deepen. And as that does so, you get cyclogenesis that wants to occur with it. So going forward, we can see um, the European model has two disturbances. The main trough is up here, the parent trough, and then the associated trough is down here. So this is what we call a stretched out long wave that is positioned over the Midwest and the Northern Plains. And the Southern portion of this, we got to keep an eye on model guidance because if there's enough forcing, if there's enough barrel clinic deepening, we could see a lot of severe weather, especially over Missouri, even portions of Illinois, because we got uh, that strong exit, left exit region there between 50 and 60 knots and that really amplifies look at this my goodness it is very negatively tilted so again a system to really watch here in the next uh two to four days uh, down the road here over the great lakes and even for the midwest very strong uh, upper level support with this uh, 90 knot winds at 500 millibars that continues to rotate into uh, Michigan and even into the Northeast. And again, the second um, Vort Max helps to actually uh, revigorate the boundary a little bit over the Northeast. That's why uh, the European model has a second wave of heavy rainfall, maybe some severe weather swinging through versus a GFS model that doesn't have much of that scenario in place. After that goes through, ridging, short uh, wave ridging will build in across the Midwest, and that's going to set the stage 
for more bigger systems, maybe returning for California, more flood concerns, more heavy snow, that lot, a lot, a lot of gaga, ga, ga. you know, you get the idea. We've had so much this year <laughs> with more rain, more snow, and it's coming back, believe it or not. Uh, that I guess it's just how the pattern's gonna stay for a while because of our negative PDO that is lingering along our coast. So, of course, temperatures. It's been a really warm one for at least a couple of days in California. Yesterday got up to 83 degrees. Today, just 72 degrees. Tomorrow, 65 degrees. Not going to warm up all that much. Actually, not 75. It's going to be about uh, 68 to 70 degrees tomorrow. So, a huge drop down with temperatures and then more further cooling by the time we go into Thursday, possibly even some low to mid 60s. So just a whole turnaround with our weather pattern here. And we can thank the trough back west for that. So very warm, of course, across the Midwest and also for the desert southwest, including for the northeast with temperatures 15 to 20 degrees above average uh, for Thursday. So it's going to be a really warm one. So a lot of you folks that are complaining about the heat, I can understand it's 31 degrees above normal over uh, South Dakota over Nebraska, it is 28 degrees above normal. Look at these temperatures getting even close here of 35 degrees above normal over northern Michigan. So really spring to summer-like temperatures are anticipated. Nice and cool back west with temperatures 10 to 15 degrees below normal. This is going to continue all the way through uh, perhaps Saturday where we have temperatures anywhere between 5 to 15 degrees above normal over the Great Lakes, over the eastern seaboard. A little bit much cooler temperatures expected as it Again, that, that snow develops on the backside of that system that's going to help drag in much cooler air in its wake. And you can see 20 degree temperature below normals are anticipated here according to the GFS. And then looks like that's going to stick around. And then guess what? California really cools off by early next week yet again as more systems bring more snow, more heavy rainfall, and more potential minor flood concerns. Rivers are still ru running high because of the snow melt that is coming down from the Sierra uh, because of all the warmer temperatures. All right, so that's a look at that. I wanted to show you all the Climate uh, um, Prediction Center here. This is showing you uh, the probability of above or below average temperatures. And of course, no exception here is at the, uh, the west. It's been just kind of just lovely cold here. Just hasn't let up. We get a few days here and there of warmer temperatures, and then boom, shukalaka, it goes right back down to below average. And that's where we stand here. California, the Pacific Northwest, across the north, you're going to have temperatures that are going to be, uh, or the chances of temperatures being below average range between 33% all the way up to 60% of that occurring likely above average for the deep south for the southeast and even for the high plains with 60 to almost 70 percent chances of that occurring and then the 8 to 14 day forecast you have below average chances across the west and the northwest including above average likely chances for the deep south and for the southeast this is a very awkward pattern to say the least. It is typically seen with La Niña's or the remnants of La Niña that um, that we just got done having a triple dip, we call it, uh, really has led to these persistent cooler than normal temperatures. It takes a couple of years typically for that to happen, but it is here. It's definitely been cooler on average despite of a few days where we have had upper 70s to low 80s. But overall, the 90-day average has been still well below average for the West. For precipitation, leaning above average chances for the Northwest, for the California region, including for the High Plains, for the Deep South, leaning below average chances for the eastern seaboard for the great lakes near average i should say uh for the four corners and also for portions of southern california and southern arizona no monsoon yet we're gonna see on how that pans out in months to come still looking at a leaning above average chances for california for the northern plains and also for the deep south so that's nice to see Areas that need the rain, definitely need it here over Kansas and portions of the High Plains. Well, it looks like you're going to definitely get a wishing well bone here of rainfall that is needed for your area. 
All right, well, that is going to kind of sum it up for today's video. If you all enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share this video with your family and friends on social media. And lastly, please consider subscribing. You guys are really awesome. I love uh, interacting with you all. I just love seeing your guys' awesome comments. So, yeah, um, that is going to do it with this video, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow. Just a quick reminder, though, um, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, my uploads will be fairly late than usual, more like, say, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. That's because I actually go to school for movie classes and stuff so therefore those two days it's going to be delayed but all the other days i plan on uploading at least by three in the afternoon all right that's going to do it